In this session, we're going to look at the Civil 3D 2017 improvements associated with data referencing. As you can see, I'm in a drawing. It's called 02 Data References. I'm going to start by coming over to the Prospector tab. Let's drag this slider down to the project area. I'd like to create some data references to some of the content in my project. Let's open the Surfaces category, and I'd like to create a reference to this existing ground surface. In Civil 3D 2017, I can do that by selecting the object, and then I can click, hold, and drag, and drop this into my file. I'm going to keep the default name. Let's change the style. I'll click in the Style box here. I'll click the Ellipsis button, and we'll change the style to Border Only. I'll click OK and OK. I will then double click the mouse wheel to do a zoom extents, and you can see that surface is now data referenced into the file. I can drag and drop individual components or multiple. As an example, we'll expand the working surfaces folder, and I'm going to select these Route 23 surfaces. I can do that by holding my Shift key or Control key to select them. Once they're selected, I will click, hold, and drag them all into the current file. It's important to note that if you bring in multiple references, their stylization will be controlled by the default settings in the drawing. That's why these surfaces have the same appearance as this previous surface. Now, I don't need these extra surfaces in the file, so I'm going to select them, and I'll press Delete. Let's drag the slider down to the bottom to the Corridors category. I'll expand this, and I'll expand the Route 23 Corridors folder. I would like to create data references to these three corridor models. I'm going to do that by selecting the folder, and then I'll click, hold, and drag the folder into my drawing. Let me mention that if you data reference a corridor, all of the baseline objects will also be referenced into the drawing. You can see I have an alignment, actually I have a couple alignments and profiles that came along for the ride. Let's zoom this in. These corridors are styled using the default code set style. I'm going to select these, and I'll go over to the Properties palette. I'll open the Code Set Style menu, and we'll choose a new Code Set Style. I apologize, this is creeping off screen. I'm going to select the new All Codes No Display style that's included with the Imperial template in Civil 3D 2017. Using that No Display style, we can hide our corridor. That being said, the No Display style does allow the daylight line to display. This makes it a little easier to select the corridor. If you wanted to, you could always edit that code set style to hide the daylight lines as well. Let me select the corridors again. I'm going to come back over to the Properties palette. I'll change the code set style. This time I'm going to choose a code set style that I made for plotting purposes. Let me press Escape, and I'll back up. Using this code set style, it hides the link and shape geometry, leaving only the feature lines, generally speaking the geometry that I'd want to see on my plottable drawings. As you can see, using the new data referenced shortcuts, I can use my original corridor model drawing as my working version where I edit the model. This referenced version would then be what I display on my plan sheets. I'm going to pan the drawing over. Another nice thing we can do with referenced corridors is build surfaces. I'm going to select this corridor on the end. I'll come up and choose Corridor Surfaces. I'm going to build a new surface. We'll keep the default name. For style, I'm going to choose Contours and Triangles, and I'll click OK. I'm going to build the surface from the top links. We'll add those as a break line. I'm going to use the top links overhang correction. And then I'd like to add a couple feature lines as well. I'll add the back of curb. We'll add the flow line of gutter, and then I'm going to add the top of curb. Finally, we'll add a boundary to the surface. I'll do that by going to the Boundaries tab. I'll right-click on the surface I just made, and I'll choose Corridor Extents as Outer Boundary. I will then come down and click OK, and I'll rebuild. Let me press Escape to deselect, and then I will select this surface, and we'll take a look at it in the Object Viewer. Let's orbit this around, and I'll zoom in. We'll orbit this a little more. As you can see, using a referenced corridor, I no longer have to create these corridor surfaces in the host drawing. I can create these surfaces in a separate file now if I want to. Let's close the Object Viewer, and I'll press Escape. In fact, I'm going to select this surface and we'll display order it to the back. There we go. Let's pan things over. After seeing this, you may be wondering, what else can you do with a referenced corridor? Well, I'll select this corridor on the right. From here, I could come up and open the Section Editor. I could extract corridor solids. I could extract feature lines. I could drive the corridor if I want to. I could add sample lines and create cross-sections. I could even pull material quantities if I want to. Generally speaking, I can do anything with a referenced corridor that I can with the actual corridor, except make edits. Let's zoom out and we'll look at another concept. Historically, when you create a data reference, a copy of each object is cached in the local file. That is, every object except for the surface. Just for a second, I'm going to go to the Prospector tab. Let's drag this up to the drawing area. 
I'll select the surfaces category. Right here, we can see my data referenced existing ground surface. If I drag this over, we can see the description, the style, the source drawing where the surface lives. Notice we have a new column called data reference status. Currently, this is set to geometry stored in drawing. That's the default. So starting in Civil 3D 2017, we have the option of caching our surface data in the local file as well. By storing this data in the file, our drawings will open quicker because the data is already in this drawing. It doesn't have to come in from a reference. Likewise, if I send this file to someone else via email, I don't have to worry about attaching the data shortcuts because a copy of this geometry is already in the file. The trade-off is if the geometry is stored in the drawing, it can make your file sizes larger. This is where you have the option. If you want to, you can go back to the classic functionality by choosing reference only. After seeing that, you may be wondering where this setting is stored if you wanted to make that adjustment in your template file. Just for a second, we'll go to the settings tab. I'll open the surface category. We'll open commands. And then I'm going to come down and find create surface reference. I'll right click on that command and choose edit command settings. Right here, we'll open surface creation, and you can see store referenced surface in drawing. By default, that's set to yes, but you could always set that to no if you wanted to. Let's close the edit command settings, and we'll return to the drawing. So when it comes to data referencing improvements, the biggest one is probably the ability to reference corridor models. That being said, referencing is not the only improvement tied to corridors. Civil 3D 2017 has also made several enhancements related to corridor modeling, and we'll start looking at those in the next session. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.